What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm excited, okay? And I'm excited for a couple of reasons. One, I get to finally talk about Cardi B. I'm a fan. But two, this is not going to be good for Cardi. But we're going to talk about Andrew Yang. We're going to talk about feminism. And we're going to talk about why Humanity First is the ideal platform for feminists. Let's get into this, man. I was trying to figure out how am I going to make this? How can I talk about Cardi B? I've been driving around for the last hour and a half trying to figure out how can I talk about Cardi B today? How, how, how? And if you don't know why I want to talk about Cardi B, let's first take you over to Twitter where Cardi B decided to let the world know about her ambitions to get into politics. It says, I do feel like if I go back to school and focus up, I can be part of Congress. I dead ass have so much ideas that make sense. I just need a couple of years of school and I can shake the table. <sighs> Andrew Yang had this piece written, uh, he had an interview with Glamour.com, and that's really the central uh, piece of this particular video. Yes, NLM, you're absolutely right. Economic strength is the first tenet of self-reliance and freedom of expression. Absolutely. That's it. That's, that's really what this is, whole thing is about. Uh, this piece is not very long. There's just a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, you know, he had that moment in the last debate with the shaking the money tree in the wine cave comment. Our country is deeply misogynist, and most all of us know that. Money and men are tied together. That's where I thought Elizabeth was taking the conversation. The fact is strong societies would elect more female leaders. Strong men treat women well for the same reasons. I'm on the record saying that you need both strong men and female leaders in government, because the fact is if you get too many men alone and leave us alone for a while, we kind of become morons. So it's related to our campaign finance rules because right now the fact is we operate in a fundamentally anti-woman marketplace. And that includes the marketplace for politicians. If we were to put 100 democracy dollars into the hands of every American voter, instead of 5% contributing, you'd see that rate skyrocket to 50 or 60%. And you'd have many, many more women who would run for office because they don't have to go shake the money tree in the wine cave. Thank you, Mr. Could I address? I, I, I do. And I guess that kind of piqued her interest, so she decided to reach out to him and talk about uh, what kind of got him down this road. I don't know if he's—I don't know if he would consider himself a feminist, but uh, he definitely is somebody who is looking out for the well-being, the rights of women. And there's just a couple of pieces here that I want to talk about that actually highlight that. He's asking him how did his views about sexism evolve, um, and he talked about growing or going through his his experience in the startup world and, and tech. And I felt like he noticed that there was definitely, it was a certain type of environment. You know what I mean? It's obviously going to be more difficult for women. The, the polls are saying that Andrew Yang has this large male uh, audience. That's really well to make this video. Uh, and perhaps he does. But it's not because uh, his, his platform doesn't speak to women. It's just perhaps hasn't been broken down, dissected, and put into a way that women will be able to consume the message. And primarily... Uh, I made the video the other day. By the way, if you have not checked out my interview with Chuck Fossey, please go ahead and take a look at that. It's going to get destroyed by the algorithm. It's got like the little, uh, we can't let this video go anywhere icon by it. So uh, it's not barely getting out to anybody. No one's probably going to see this video, but it is a, a great conversation with somebody who has experienced Andrew Yang's Freedom Dividend. Obviously, in the, the true experience of the Freedom Dividend, he would have, him and his family would have been given $1,000 per month each. He has three people in his household over the age of 18, but this is just $1,000 per month for the family. So uh, he mentioned that in a true UBI experience, he would have received, um, you know, 36000 for the year or so, you know, 3000 a month. He would have tried to get more into entrepreneurship, but with only receiving $1,000 a month, that wasn't quite enough for him to do that. But he could definitely see, um, he started to see the light. You know, there, there was, he came into the, the election you know, probably going to go with, uh, with with Bernie, possibly Warren, but after experiencing UBI and, and seeing that uh, that it provides this more urgent, this more immediate ability for someone to make a change in their life instead of having to rely on some type of government program, none of that. Here's a check. Do what you need to do, and that's it. What he was able to do with his family, and as a result, he is now a fantastic ambassador. By the way, he was just on MSNBC yesterday. Crushed that interview, um, and I know he's got some other stuff going on. So. Yeah, 
thanks again, Chuck, for taking your time out to speak to me. It was incredible. And uh, I think I'm going to have to reach out to Kyle Christensen next to see if we can get him on to talk about his experience. But I say that because in explaining that 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 uh, that experience and there was a, a comment in the on the video, um, it, it kind of broke back down into this whole. Okay, well, if you just do something that the market, uh, if you do something that the market values, and that solves all problems, and that's that's the common criticism, that's the common capitalist conversation. You know what I mean? Whenever you start talking about anything that sounds even remotely like uh, socialism or, or communism or whatever. People start getting into, oh, no, no, if you just do what the market values, then you'll be good, and that'll solve all your problems. But the problem, which is why this is relevant to Cardi B, is because just because the market values something, <laughs> it does not mean that it's something good, okay? Classic example would be um, healthcare outcomes. The, mar- the market values people being sick forever, so that way they can always prescribe you some new drugs so they can make a bunch of money. Doesn't mean that's good for the people, that just means it's good for the, uh, the the economics of the business. You know, same thing. We have predatory lenders. Predatory lenders, their entire business model is, okay, we'll give you the money, but we're going to charge you exorbitant amounts of interest in order for us to be able to, um, you know, cover our risk. And we understand why something like that would exist, but it doesn't mean it's the best thing for society. And that's really what we're trying to get to. We're really trying to get to a humanity f- first approach where we're not talking about simply what someone v- brings to the marketplace or what they Uh, or what they can do as far as contributing monetarily, we're talking about you having value as as a person. But that is what Andrew Yang noticed as far as his experience in tech. Uh, You see and you think, wow, any thought of the startup uh, ecosystem is somehow a meritocracy of ideas and the process is fair is completely far- farcical and that's just what it is like that it's not fair it's not about fairness uh, she asked how did she realize it was such a problem um, did it, did he realize that um, the way women were treated in the workplace was such a problem when his wife had children how in the heck is the United States nearly alone on a global list of countries that doesn't recognize something as a basic uh, as basic as a need for moms to take time off when they have kids it's because you're pathologically anti-woman, anti-family, and we treat everyone like their only value is their economic output. And that is, that's it, man. That's it. That's what Angie Yang is about. That's what people don't understand. That's what they keep missing. That's why they think $1,000 a month, period, we're, we're selling our souls for $1,000 for a, $1, a month. I, if Andrew Yang kept his $1,000 and simply went on changing the incentives of capitalism, that would have such a... Uh, a, a, a huge impact on our society. You know, what type of activities are we incentivizing? That, that's really what this comes down to. That's that's why Cardi B is a problem. I don't have no problem with Cardi B getting their money, but come on, Cardi, you can't talk about drugging people and, and that's going to be okay, but you're successful because you made money, so therefore we should forgive everything that you ever said. No, I love Cardi. I want Cardi to be successful, but I don't want her to be a role model. I don't want my daughters looking up to Cardi B. I don't want her in Congress making up policy. Just make your money. Like, it's okay. You can have influence, but from the side. Just stay on the sideline. What about reproductive health? What role does that play? A group of women recently asked me about women's reproductive rights. I said that I think men should leave the room and let women decide for themselves what to do. I have a feeling I know what they're going to decide. But to me, it's embarrassing that a male legislator would even show up in that conversation. But then a woman took me aside and after I said what I said, said, hey, Andrew, I understand the spirit of what you're saying, but the fact is we need you to fight for our freedom. She understood that what I meant uh, was we should get out of the way and let women decide. She said that that's a beautiful in spirit, but that's not reality. The reality is you have to get in there and you have to fight for our rights. And I heard that and said, she's right. I mean, like it or not, we need to get more men on board and I want to be someone who can lead in that direction. Classic Yang being told by the people that, hey, we need you to go further and he's willing to be someone who goes further. But more importantly, we've seen him talk about his uh, his position on considering legal or decriminalizing prostitution as a way to protect women. We have a problem. We want to protect women. How can we do it? Uh, well, let's put money in their in their pocket and put money in your hand because if your only value is your economic value and you don't have that for whatever reason, then how could Andrew Yang's platform not be the most pro women platform out there? I mean, childcare and all of these other things they they sound great, they 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 feel great, but the reality is 
we want you to have equal opportunity and equal rights. And in order for you to be equal, you shouldn't be reduced to us simply deciding where your money needs to go. Why don't we just give you the money in your hand and you decide what's best for your life? And that's what Andrew Yang wants to create. He wants to create an environment where women have the ability to do whatever they feel like they need to do for their own lives instead of having the government once again step in and decide uh, where they should be putting their resources. So Andrew Yang, pro-women, he's out here. He's fighting for you. And uh, Cardi, I love what you're, what you're doing for your family, but I don't want you to have any influence whatsoever on mine. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one.